What's up, guys? This is Chris from DraftDashboard.com. Here are my DFS picks for NFL playoffs, Saturday games, top DFS picks. These picks apply for DraftKings and FanDuel. Before I get started, please drop a like on this video and hit that red subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you don't miss our new videos. In this video, I'm gonna go over my top picks for this week's NFL slate. And if you stick around to the very end of this video, we'll use the draft dashboard tools to make a DFS lineup using the picks we just made. Okay guys, NFL playoffs. This is the divisional round. Let's take a look at the quarterback position. So you got Aaron Rodgers as the top or the most expensive quarterback on the slate. And if you want to pay up for Aaron Rodgers, that's fine. He could have a crazy game here this week. Uh, it's a high scoring game, 47.5 points scored in this game. Actually, it looks like both of these games are gonna be about 47.5 uh, points. Vegas thinks there's gonna be 47.5 points scored in each of these games. So the point total is the same. And the Green Bay Packers are favored by five and a half. Aaron Rodgers is 7,100 DraftKings salary, 1,300 more on FanDuel, averaging 28.8 fantasy points per game on the season, gets an average of 2.1 rush attempts per game, and uh, Joe Burrow actually also is averaging 21.8 fantasy points per game on the season, getting 2.5 rush attempts per game, so... Joe Burrow has the better matchup here. The Tennessee Titans give up the ninth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, where the San Francisco 49ers have a better defense. And Joe Burrow is 6,600 DraftKings salary, 1,100 more on FanDuel. So if I'm going to pick a quarterback in this matchup, it's actually not going to be Aaron Rodgers or Joe Burrow. I'm going to pay down at quarterback in this slate. So I like Ryan Tannehill from the Tennessee Titans playing the Cincinnati Bengals, who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They're middle of the pack defending opposing quarterbacks. Ryan Tannehill has averaged 17.2 fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of 3.2 rush attempts per game. He's projected at 16.7 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs, but I think he can score 20 or more fantasy points in this matchup, and he's only 5,800 DraftKings salary. Now, he is 1,500 more on FanDuel. We know Vegas thinks there's going to be 47.5 points scored in this game, with the Tennessee Titans favored by four. So Ryan Tannehill is going to get Derrick Henry back, but I don't know if they're going to give him his full amount of carries. You know, I don't think he's going to get 30 carries in his first game back, but he is going to be a, de a good decoy for the passing game. Not necessarily a decoy, but he's going to be a good addition for the passing game so they can get a strong running game going with that play action pass. And I just like the salary savings here on Ryan Tannehill. Now you got Jimmy Garoppolo at 5,200 and 1,300 more on FanDuel. And you could go with Garoppolo, but he's got a much lower floor. Only scored six fantasy points last week. Whereas Ryan Tannehill scored 27 fantasy points last game. So I think you have a higher floor and a higher ceiling with Ryan Tannehill. So I like the salary savings of this play for this slate. So I like Ryan Tannehill here versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay guys, it's time to announce the winner of our $25 weekly PayPal giveaway. And the winner is Joe Garza. Joe Garza, congratulations. You are the winner of this week's $25 PayPal giveaway. Please reply to our comment to collect your prize. Before I continue with the picks, I'm excited today because we added a new contest for everyone watching. If you want to enter the drawing for $25 PayPal, all you need to do is like this video, hit that subscribe button, and make a quick comment below to be entered into the drawing. 
will reply to a random comment and let you know that you won. And we'll send you $25 PayPal. So it's that easy, and we pick a new winner every Saturday and announce them in our video. So get your comment in now so I can add another entry for you. Okay, let's take a look at the running back position. Okay, so we mentioned Derek Henry is back. He's 7,500 DraftKings salary, 1,500 more on FanDuel. Now, I just don't know how many carries he's going to get this game. I don't think he's going to get his season average. He was averaging 27.4 carries a game and 2.5 pass targets. So the guy was getting like 30 touches a game on average, which is just insane volume for a running back. Now, I just don't think that's going to happen in his first game back, but I really don't know. So uh, he is the best running back on the slate but he's the most expensive running back on the slate. And I think there's a little bit of risk with this pick. So I'll probably have a lineup with him in it, but I'm not going to go all in on Derrick Henry here till I see how he performs in his first game back. So I like Derrick Henry, but the guy that I really like on this slate is Joe Mixon from the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Tennessee Titans who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They've been good versus opposing running backs, but Joe Mixon has averaged 18.6 fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of 18.3 rush attempts per game and three pass targets per game. He's going to be about 23% owned, projected at 17.7 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's 6,600 DraftKings salary. 1200 more on FanDuel and Joe Mixon scored 12 and 16 fantasy points in his last two games off of 17 and 12 rush attempts on top of five and eight pass targets. So a little bit of a letdown last game for Joe Mixon. I think he does bounce back here and score 15 fantasy points or more. He's got some monster upside. So I like Joe Mixon here versus the Tennessee Titans. Now the other running back that I like on the slate is Elijah Mitchell from the San Francisco 49ers playing the Green Bay Packers who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They've been pretty good versus opposing running backs but Elijah Mitchell has averaged 16.4 fantasy points per game on the season getting an average of 18.8 .8 rush attempts per game and 1.8 pass targets per game. He's going to be about 20% owned, projected at 15.7 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's only 5,800 DraftKings salary. He's 1,500 more on FanDuel. And Elijah Mitchell has scored 16, 9, and 24 fantasy points in the last three games, up of 27, 21 and 21 rush attempts on top of two zero and two pass targets so that's pretty awesome volume for a low price tag a guy that's been productive so i like elijah mitchell here versus the green bay packers okay let's take a look at the wide receiver position of course, you got Devontae Adams on the slate, the most expensive wide receiver on the slate at 8,500 DraftKings salary, 200 more on FanDuel. He is a slate breaker, so you don't want to ignore this guy. He's going to be about 23% owned. Uh, but the guy that I really like on this slate is Jamar Chase from the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Tennessee Titans who have a middle of the pack defense overall and they give up the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Jamar Chase has averaged 18.9 fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of 7.5 pass targets per game. He's going to be about 16% owned, projected at 25.6 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's 7,100 DraftKings salary, 1,100 more on FanDuel, and he scored 26, 5, and 59 fantasy points in the last three games off of 12, 4, and 12 pass targets. Also got three rush attempts last game, so that's pretty interesting. So I like Jamar Chase 
here versus the Tennessee Titans. Real quick guys, I got great news. For a limited time, we're offering a full 30 day trial to Draft Dashboard. You can try all the tools for NFL. NBA is right around the corner. This is a great time to get in and try everything for one month. The tools are all about saving research time. You can see the last three games, the fantasy points per game, the targets they got per game, so you can see how involved they are in the offense, the rushes they got per game. Seeing all this stuff on one screen helps you save time and make better picks. Oh, and if you're tired of doing research every day, we just added a cheat sheet that shows hand-picked plays for the slate. No confusing stat lines, no headaches, just a simple cheat sheet that shows the absolute best players for your lineups. Now, if you want to save some salary at the wide receiver position, I got a couple of salary saver options for you guys here. So the first one is Brandon Ayuk from the San Francisco 49ers playing the Green Bay Packers, who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They give up the 12th most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Brandon Ayuk has averaged 10.3 fantasy points per game on the season getting an average of 4.9 pass targets per game. He's gonna be about 8% owned, projected at 13.1 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's 5,100 DraftKings salary, 700 more on FanDuel. And Brandon Ayuk has been outperforming his season average in the last three games, scoring 12, 20, and 13 fantasy points off of six, seven, and six pass targets. Now Vegas thinks the 49ers are gonna be trailing by five and a half in this game, so it could turn into somewhat of a passing game script here. So I think he's gonna get plenty of targets in this one. So I like Brandon Ayuk here versus the Green Bay Packers. Okay, now probably my favorite value wide receiver on the slate is Tyler Boyd from the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Tennessee Titans, who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They give up the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Tyler Boyd has averaged 11.7 fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of 5.9 pass targets per game. He's gonna be about 9% owned, projected at 9.8 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs but I think he can score 12 fantasy points or more in this one. And he's only 4,700 DraftKings salary, 1,000 more on FanDuel. And Tyler Boyd has scored 13 and 14 fantasy points in the last two games off of five and six pass targets. Got one rush attempt last game. So Tyler Boyd's in a great matchup here. So I think an interesting stack would be Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. Good matchup there in a game that Vegas thinks the Bengals are going to be trailing by four. So Tennessee Titans could get out to an early lead and force the Bengals to throw the ball. And you're going to save some salary with this Tyler Boyd pick. So I think that's a pretty good stack right there. So I like Tyler Boyd here versus the Tennessee Titans. Now, for the Green Bay Packers, if you're looking for a value play, take a look at Alan Lazard from the Green Bay Packers playing the San Francisco 49ers, who have a good defense overall. They're middle of the pack defending opposing wide receivers. Alan Lazard has averaged 9.5 fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of four pass targets per game. He's going to be about 8% owned, projected at 11.1 .1 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's 4,300 DraftKings salary, 1,600 more on FanDuel. And Alan Lazard has scored 25, 19, and 14 fantasy points in the last three games off of six, six, and five pass targets. So super productive in his last three games. So I like Alan Lazard here versus the San Francisco 49ers. Now, if you're looking for a value play for the Tennessee Titans, you could take a look at Julio Jones, who's only 4,600 DraftKings salary, only 900 more on FanDuel. 
He showed some life last game. He scored 17 fantasy points off of nine pass targets. Going to be about 8% owned. So that's a low salary play you could consider just based on that last game. If he's going to get eight or nine pass targets, that makes him a pretty interesting play there. So I think Julio Jones is an interesting value play if you want to go there here versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, moving on to the tight end position. So the tight end, the tight end stud on the slate, he has not played well the past three games, but he does have a good matchup and he's bound to have a breakout game sooner or later. So I like George Kittle from the San Francisco 49ers playing the Green Bay Packers who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They give up the 10th most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. George Kittle has averaged 14.9 fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of 6.7 pass targets per game. He's going to be about 19% owned. He's on the field for 92% of the snaps, projected at 15.6 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's 5,300 DraftKings salary, 1,100 more on FanDuel, and... We know Vegas thinks there's going to be 47.5 points scored in this game with the 49ers trailing by five and a half. Now, George Kittle has only scored three, six, and five fantasy points in the last three games off of three, seven, and two tar uh, pass targets. So that recency bias, I think, is the reason why this ownership isn't higher I mean, it's 19%, but he is only 5,300 DraftKings salary, and he's had some monster games this year. So I think it's a good time to buy low with this pick. So I like George Kittle here versus the Green Bay Packers. Okay, another tight end that I like. Now, these are a couple value plays if you want to save some salary at the tight end position. Take a look at CJ Uzoma from the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Tennessee Titans, who have a middle-of-the-pack defense overall. They've been pretty good versus opposing tight ends. C.J. Uzoma has averaged eight fantasy points per game on the season, getting an average of 3.9 pass targets per game. He's going to be about 14% owned, projected at 11.3 fantasy points here in the divisional round of the playoffs. He's only 3,400 DraftKings salary. He is 2,100 more on FanDuel. And CJ Uzoma scored 18 fantasy points last game off of six pass targets and seven fantasy points the game before that off of six pass targets. So he's getting plenty of pass targets. And this guy has shown that he's got two touchdown upside at a low price tag. So I like CJ Uzoma here versus the Tennessee Titans. And another guy that's played pretty well the past couple of games is Anthony Fersker from the Tennessee Titans playing the Cincinnati Bengals who have a middle of the pack defense overall. They give up the six most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Anthony Fersker, he scored 16 and 11 fantasy points in his last two games off of four and three pass targets now, he's only going to be about 6% owned, so this would be a good sleeper pick on a two-game slate, and he's only 3,100 DraftKings salary, 2,100 more on FanDuel, so you can see most people are just going to spend 300 more and go with CJ Uzoma, but it's possible that Anthony Fersker is the guy that scores more fantasy points in this one, so I think he's just an interest, interesting sleeper pick here. He's got a great matchup. So I like Anthony Fersker here versus the Cincinnati Bengals. If you want to try all these daily fantasy tools for yourself, click the link in the description below this video or just go to draftdashboard.com. You can use our DFS lineup optimizer to build quality lineups using our picks and your own custom player pool. Click the link in the description below this video and try all these daily fantasy tools right now. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can get instant updates whenever we post a new video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please smiggity smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Oh, and please comment below with your favorite player for this NBA slate. I love to hear what you guys have to think. Thanks again and good luck.